This video is for familiarization only and is designed to assist in pre-emergency planning for incidents involving our nation's railroads. The information presented in this video can assist your agency in developing safe and effective protocols and incident response procedures. This video and the information contained herein is not intended to take the place of actual training, replace basic safety rules, departmental guidelines, or established regional response protocols. Nine one one, what's the address of your emergency? I, I, I don't know where I am, but someone just got hit by a train. On average, a person or motor vehicle is involved in a collision with a train every three hours. The most common causes of these emergencies include drivers speed up to beat a train, a motor vehicle stuck on a track, suicide attempts, trespassers, or distracted walkers or drivers. With such a high frequency of occurrence, it is likely you will receive a railroad emergency call at some point during your career. Listen to the following 911 call involving a motorist. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Send help. Someone's been hit by a train. Okay, what's the address of the emergency? I have no idea. Uh, it was out on the railroad tracks. And what's the phone number you're calling from? Oh, uh, 617 555 8055. And someone got hit on the tracks? Yes. Yes, they're hurt really bad. Please, please send some help. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. Are you prepared to respond to this type of call? And this video is designed to provide valuable information to assist you when responding to a railroad emergency. What information do you need to answer a call quickly and efficiently? What are the steps you should take when answering a call involving a railroad? And when do you contact the railroads if you receive a call involving a train? As a dispatcher, you want to gather as much information as possible to determine the appropriate response. Dealing with a railroad incident requires a different type of response. There are unique factors you need to consider. Railroad incidents will require the coordination between you and the railroad. Locomotive weights range from approximately 150,000 to 450,000 pounds. Freight trains could reach weights in excess of 12 million pounds. The sheer mass of a train makes it impossible to halt its movement quickly. If a train is traveling at 55 miles per hour, it may take a mile or more for the train to come to a complete stop. This is equivalent to the length of 18 football fields. The train crew may not be able to stop the train quickly enough to avoid a collision. Think of this analogy. Imagine what happens to a soda can run over by a car. The weight ratio between a typical 3,000-pound car and a 12-ounce can of soda is 4,000 to 1. By comparison, the weight ratio between a typical 12 million pound freight train and that same 3,000 pound car is also 4,000 to 1. A train hitting a car is comparable to a car running over a can of soda. Due to their size, weight, and inability to stop quickly, trains always have the right of way, even over emergency vehicles, law enforcement, and pedestrians. Trains can move in either direction on any track at any time. They extend three feet or more beyond the steel rails. Today's trains are quieter than ever and may seem farther away and moving slower than they actually are. Have you ever watched an airplane land? Did the airplane appear to be suspended in the air or moving at a very slow speed? When in reality, the airplane is traveling several hundred miles per hour. This optical illusion is similar to the perception of a train's speed. Most railroad incidents are avoidable if motorists and pedestrians heeded warning signs and complied with traffic control devices and laws. 
Grade crossing collisions involving vehicles may occur because the motorist was impatient, misjudged the train speed and distance, failed to look in both directions when approaching a crossing, or was distracted. The severity of motorist injury in vehicle train collisions is significant. A motorist is many times more likely to die in a collision involving a train than in a collision involving another vehicle. In addition to motor vehicle collisions, a high number of pedestrians die while trespassing on railroad property. Not only is it illegal to trespass on railroad property, it's dangerous and may be fatal. Trespassers often put their lives at risk, not realizing the dangers railroad property and equipment may pose. By failing to obey laws put in place for public safety, motorists and trespassers increase their chance of being critically injured or killed. These incidents often result in needless death, injury, or property damage, but can also affect communities and train crews. As you're receiving a call involving trains, it is important to understand all of the factors to safely and quickly dispatch the correct emergency responders. Different types of trains have different types of responses. Listen to the following call. What types of questions are you formulating? What information do you need to know? 911, what's your emergency? Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. No, what's your emergency? What's going on? I got hit by a train. Okay, where are you at? I am on the tracks. Were you in your car? No, I was walking. Okay, but you don't know where you, what what street are you closest to? I had no idea. Okay. What's your name? Mark. And your phone number? 216. Please. Yeah, we'll get officers in. I mean, I kind of have a spot that your phone pulled up to. We'll try to get an officer and some medics out there as soon as we can. Oh, please, Are please, you out there please, with anybody please. else? I, I'm losing a lot of blood. Okay, we'll get somebody out there, okay? Okay. Bye. Yeah, this is the Columbus Police Department. Do you see the chopper or anything overhead? No, I don't see anything. Okay, honey, where were you walking from? Oh, please, kill me, please. Okay, well, we can't find you. Please don't kill me. What do you mean, kill you? Mom, I'm trying. I'm trying to it down, put it down. What? Chopper, chopper, put it down. I think call, Chopper, I, I think see Caller I see can chopper. see you um, somewhere if you're overhead. I'm trying to get a good location on him. Uh, please, just can you wave to him? Please. Wave to the Chopper. I can't. I can't. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. You don't see the Chopper any longer? No, they left. Okay, now he's saying that he doesn't see you any longer. I'm trying to find out where he was coming from and going to. Stand by. Oh, they're coming back. They're coming back. Wave to him as they come by, if you can. They're coming towards me. They're coming towards me. All right, Chopper, I have him on the line south now saying that you're coming towards him. They got to wait on me. Looks like a, you're right above over. him, he said. Stop. Tell him to stop. Call and stop. Go down, straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down. Okay, 160 is coming to you, okay? Due to the actions of the emergency responders, the victim in this case survived his injuries. Some callers may not know their exact location, and you must rely on your expertise to determine their location. The actual location of the accident may be different than the location given to emergency responders. The train may have traveled further down the track. Oftentimes, the caller is unable to provide exact locations. They may be calling from the scene of impact, but do not know where the train finally stopped. If the emergency happens at a grade crossing, callers may provide you with street names or intersections. Information may be vague and include nearby businesses or even names of the nearby property owners. If the location is unclear and the caller is near the grade crossing, I ask them to look for the blue sign that has the USDOT number and other important information about the location of the incident. You may have signs posted in non-standardized color and format. Here are some examples of those signs. 
Callers may not know how to find this information, so you will have to direct the caller to the locations of this important information. The blue signs are located on the railroad cross buck post or near the grade crossing signal equipment. The sign includes the railroad emergency information phone number, USDOT number, as well as who's responsible for the grade crossing. Emergency responders and the railroads will need specific information involving a USDOT crossing inventory number or railroad mile post numbers. The National Law Enforcement Terminal Systems, or NLETS, is a valuable tool to help determine the exact location. NLETS provides location information not only for your area, but the entire 50 states. The U.S. Department of Transportation assigns a unique number to every grade crossing, overpass, and underpass. The number consists of six numeric and one alpha character. In addition to the USDOT number, mileposts are utilized to create a marker system similar to highway maps. Does your call center have a map? If not, now is the time to pre-plan for the next call and obtain a map for your area. Both USDOT numbers and the milepost markers provide the railroad with the exact location of the grade crossing. Remember, the incident could be a mile or more down the track. The USDOT number provides a starting position, especially for the emergency response team dispatched to the incident. You do not want to delay in response just because the exact location cannot be determined. The key is to gather as much information as possible about the location of the emergency. This information will be vital when contacting the railroads. The responding emergency response team may call in to you to contact the railroad to stop a train. The USDOT number provides the railroad the exact location of the grade crossing in order to prevent further damage or injuries. When you receive a call about a railroad incident, try to keep the caller on the line. Utilize various resources to determine location and follow your expertise. Use clear, concise language and try to get as much information as possible to respond to the call quickly and efficiently. Once I determine the location of the emergency, I need to determine what the emergency is. This requires analyzing the caller's information. As you are determining the type of emergency, you should start planning your next course of action as well as additional information you need from the caller. You will want to determine the appropriate emergency responder personnel to dispatch. When I receive a call involving a railroad emergency, I begin asking myself several questions. Does the call involve a trespasser or a motor vehicle? If a motor vehicle, is the person still in it? Is the motor vehicle blocking the track? Is the motor stuck on the track? Does a train involve a freight train or a passenger train? Are there any hazardous materials or fluids leaking? Once you begin receiving information from the caller, you need to decide which emergency responder to dispatch, if any. You may not be aware, but you should always contact the railroads as soon as possible. This should be done prior to dispatching local resources or done simultaneously as you dispatch local resources. In any given railroad incident, the railroad must be notified and can be of great assistance in an extremely dangerous situation. Your actions can directly prevent a tragedy. Your center should have all of the railroad contact information for your area of jurisdiction. Sometimes the railroad will contact their central dispatch centers in cases of emergencies. These central dispatch centers may be thousands of miles away with no railroad office within a local jurisdiction. In fact, one railroad dispatch center may serve several states. In these situations, the dispatch center does not have the capability to call 911 because they're located several states away. These dispatch centers utilize a 10-digit phone number to contact local agencies. Check to see if your dispatch center has updated these numbers. This poses communication challenges but can be mitigated by following protocol outlined by your local center. No matter the nature of the call, if it involves a railroad, contact the railroads immediately. As with the complainant, get the direct callback number of the railroad. Ideally, you'll want to keep the railroad on the line and update them regularly. The railroad is able to stop trains approaching the area of the emergency. They have the ability to immediately contact the train crews aboard the train involved in the incident. Establishing contact with the train crews will be vital to emergency responders dispatched to the scene. When calling the railroad, identify yourself, identify the problem, and give them the USDOT number or milepost number. The railroad will then confirm the location and radio the train or nearby trains. Hi, this is Brunswick Police reporting a trespasser on a rail in the area of the Church Road grade crossing. I've got a grade crossing number of 364. 
J. John, and I do have officers in the area and looking for him on the tracks. So if you could stop all trains for us until further notice. By now, you have information about the nature of the call and have contacted the railroad to aid in the assistance of responding to the emergency. In dispatching emergency responders, it is important to prepare the responders to the nature of the call. You may receive information from either the caller or the railroads. In dispatching the responder, relay the information using clear, plain English. Avoid jargon or slang to prevent miscommunication and misunderstanding to the emergency responders. Verify that the railroads have been contacted and relay this information to the responders. Alert them to potential hazardous oncoming train traffic or other safety risks. It is vital for the response team arriving to contact the train crew. If the train has been stopped, provide the emergency responders with a crew location and a train crew point of contact. Engaging the train crew is imperative to safely handling an emergency quickly and efficiently. This is why contacting the railroad immediately helps to engage train crew personnel early in the emergency response. Using the callback number you obtained in the first initial communication is important to keep the railroad updated regularly during the emergency response, especially if the arriving police officers, EMT, or firefighters need to stop, slow, or prevent oncoming trains from entering the area. Even if the train is not involved in the emergency, you may have a situation where responders are in a train yard or on the tracks. Notifying the railroads prevents escalation of a potentially dangerous situation. County Dispatch and Fire and Rescue need to respond to Church Road at the railroad crossing intersection for a report of a train versus pedestrian with known injury. 10-4 County Units will be en route. Now that we've heard several examples of calls you may receive and reviewed the necessary steps involved in responding to a railroad emergency call, you should start pre-planning for future calls. Does your communication center have an established protocol? Do you have a standard operating procedure? Do you know how to find railroad contact information? Do you know how to use the Geographic Information System, referred to as the GIS? If you've answered no to any of these questions, now is the time to pre-plan. The National Emergency Number Association published the Public Safety Communications and Railroad Interaction Standard Operating Procedures. This should be readily available to you and you may also obtain the document from www.nina.org. A second resource is the Federal Railroad Administration, which provides detailed documents and online resources to guide you in responding to an emergency involving a railroad. The website, www.fra.dot.gov, also contains facts and documents related to the general operation of railroads, regulations, and rules for governing the tracks. Operation Lifesaver is another online source for rail safety education. Located at www.oli.org, Operation Lifesaver provides training videos, online education resources, as well as public awareness materials. All these resources provide comprehensive materials to help you take appropriate actions when receiving a call involving the railroads. So remember, when receiving a call, obtain as much information from the caller as possible especially location information, such as a crossing number or railroad mile post number. Utilize resources, such as GIS, list of contacts for the railroad dispatch centers, and other material available at your facility. Always contact the railroad, even if you're unsure if the call is an emergency. Dispatch the correct emergency response team. Be sure to gain as much information as possible. Is the person injured? Is the person still in the car? Does this involve fire or hazardous materials? Is a nearby community in danger? Direct the emergency response team to make contact with the train crews. The crew will be instrumental in the response efforts. If feasible, keep the railroads on the line and constantly update them on the status of the response team. Remember, not all railroad dispatch centers are in the local area, but they have direct communications with the involved train crew as well as other trains in the area. The railroads may stop or slow oncoming trains if necessary. And finally, Always follow protocol and prepare yourself for a call involving railroads. Does your agency have a protocol? If not, now is the time to develop one. When dealing with an incident involving the railroads, remember, be prepared, always contact the railroads, and keep an open line of communication. Thank you. We're all on the same team.